a mixture of arcanum and mathematics, the ship on the Mediterranean. Unbelievable! Our investigator actually met this group of arcanists who believed in numbers, and even left such a precious record down on paper. Does it mean we are close to being helpful to Virgin? Certainly, it's what we deserve for all the efforts today. Hmm, but why did they leave such an important report in the reference room storing unnecessary information? Did they miss put it here after the chaos of the storm? Among them, the most easygoing one was Hugh. He was an engineer as well as an arcanist. We shared the same preference for human technology, and that became our common topic. Hugh was in his thirties, red-haired, cheeks sunken, and deeply depressed due to some kind of eye disease. He was a decent man, with a prudent attitude working at a desk most of the time. He reminded me of the imperial miniature painting artists in the Sultan's palace. Most of them ended up blind after toiling for their life. He showed me the picture of his daughter. I don't have children, but I could feel his happiness as a father. Although I got along well with Hugh, he seemed quite out of place among that group. which was actually led by her. I don't know what words to use to describe her. She was like a meteor shower, a tempest, or an unreasonable catastrophe itself. Her existence was just like her name. It was simple, yet implied a lot. Please forgive me for my cowardice. Even now I don't have the courage to write down her name if one would call that a name. In fact, she was quite a kind, warm-hearted person. Among all the unregistered arcanists I've met, she was one of the nicest ones towards the Foundation. She looked young, even though I heard she had a daughter too. Besides, she still possessed the innocence of a child, and that kind of excitement exclusive for genius. That's right. It seemed the whole world was like a sparkling toy to her. Our communication was heart-stirring at the beginning. Both of us were eager to find out what was happening, like two shipwrecked victims grappling at each other on the sea. But I didn't have the slightest idea what she was talking about, actually. The problem was not the typical communication issues between humans and arcanists. I was sure the language we used didn't pose any obstacles, but still I couldn't understand any words of hers. I would believe that one is highly intelligent if one can name all the factors of 11,567 without thinking. But what this one said was illogical nonsense which no one could ever imagine. She claimed that there is a world of numbers above all else where the non-physical essences of all things exist in the form of timeless, absolute, unchangeable ideas, and that the physical world where the time flows is nothing but an appendage, which has never been real or true. And that's why the chaos in this world is not worth any attention, and we should focus on what happened to the supreme existence. What an utter disaster combining modern maths with the ancient superstition. I saw another hubristic arcanist pretending to be the prophet by reliving Platonism. I don't even bother to mention the balderdash on soul numbers. Even the New Age movement could use some of her absurdity. But that was not yet the end. She even claimed to be aware of the exact year when the next reverse would happen. But 
when I asked her about it seriously, she said, My apologies. I've made an oath. I shall and only shall reveal the demonstration to people who have their own soul numbers. I'm not sure whether she was making fun of me or being serious, but I had this feeling that she was eager to tell me how she was granted the secret through a moment of afflatus. It seemed she just saw through the laws behind all things instead of finding them through logical deduction. Can't you see it? It is right in front of you. After I expressed my inability to comprehend her words 30 times, she finally gave up and proffered regrets. I'd rather take it as a new kind of humiliation. What really irritated me about her, however, was her contempt towards science and all the scientific research methods. As far as I'm concerned, the value of a theory lies in its reliability, universality, and generalizability. Our pursuit of the truth has laid the foundation of modern science, allowing us to change the world. Yet, in her eyes, the value of a theory lies in its beauty. I talked to her on the current situation, and I told her how we would save lives and preserve the hard-earned technology of mankind if we could find the pattern of the storm. It was of course not an easy thing to do and would take enormous manpower, so I asked her sincerely to join the Foundation. Yet again she responded with contempt. She believed they would only become another military squad of the Foundations. Darling, maths are beautiful for their uselessness. That's why it remains noble and graceful in this sordid world, despite you humans' reckless action of using it to calculate ballistic. She turned down my invitation and left an unfairly negative comment on our storm observation project. The observation stations you built are destined to be toppled because their basis is the fragile world that follows the laws of physics. The efforts you've made are like nails on a sand beach, which will only be carried away by the next tidal wave. But I said, perhaps our efforts are in vain, but someone has to do it. We will try every corner of the beach before making the conclusions that the world we are living in is already a hopeless ruin. <laughs> what a pragmatic, rigorous, and rational speech. But dear, the world is a hopeless ruin. The conversation ended in disagreement. I don't know why arcanists hate the world so much. Perhaps the reason is they have never been truly accepted. To this day, I still remember her venomous conclusion. The world built on past experiences has ended. In your words, which you used to mock us, why not embrace the reality? <laughs> Yet about the gnosis which she deeply believed in and the so-called prophecies she made through numbers, she had never given any proofs or details that showed rigorous logic. And the reason for her inactions was... was an oath she had made before some stone? Therefore I believed her words were only the nonsense of a lunatic. When we first met, I thought she was different from all those psychos... who mistook the malfunction of their prefrontal cortex as the will of God. But they turned out to be the same. In the name of human sense, I swore everything she said was absurd and ridiculous to me. Until... Hmm... Madame Z said the arcanists on that island are all named after numbers. Because they have a strong belief that numbers are the essence of their souls. The investigator wouldn't write down her name. Is it because of the conflict between their beliefs? Oh. 
Huh? That's all? Submitting such an unfinished report would only cause problems for the reviewers and evaluators, but this investigator didn't even write down their name. Don't worry, Ms. Burnish. I'm familiar with this situation. Every time after the brave Typhon defeats Jupiter, he returns to the Auto Island. But each time we twist the ear of Mr. Glassbox, Typhon will show up again and again. Ms. Moisson told me, the ear is the key to bringing back our hope. Wait, don't tell me you are talking about the shows on the mechanical television! Stop! Uh, stop, Miss Sotheby! Please, take a seat on the cushion and listen to me carefully. This is a detailed report written by a formal investigator of the Foundations, not some TV show full of cliffhangers. That means we will definitely find the rest somewhere. Oh, I see! Must be a cocoa treant who took away the other part of the book. Usually, they will be attracted by Luna Fixer, and by following their traces, will find their lairs in the stable. You mean someone took it away? Hmm, that's highly possible. Data loss is not allowed in the Foundation, especially under the Monitor Assistance Management. We must prepare Luna Fixer! Don't forget their favorite jigging magical beans! Hmm, I don't have those materials with me right now, but I can write to them. It only takes a month. Needs that. You've perfectly accomplished the task from me when you found this valuable report. Well done, Assistant Sotheby. Now it's time for the great Matilda to show a little bit of her greatness. <laughs> 